This is the 2024 Asus Republic of Gamer Zephyrus G14. Really like the new chassis redesign. I've seen some love and some hate for it, but overall, I think it was a great choice to make it slimmer, lighter, and just far more functional. I can't wait to show you some of the features that have improved on the laptop this year. However, there's one pretty big thing that I was disappointed with, and that will come near the performance section in the video. You definitely don't wanna miss out on that because it could really help with your overall buying decision when it comes to the Asus Remote Gamer Zephyrus G14. Now, first and foremost, the one thing that I noticed when unboxing is they've gone for a very modern look this year. In past years, the unboxing and packaging has been very gamer, very exciting, very holographic, and just very poppy. This year, it was very minimal. When I pulled the laptop out of the box and the charger block for the first time, I also noticed that they had a brand new charger port included with this laptop. So it no longer is the charger port that we've seen in years past. It's a square charger port, so you won't be able to use any of your past Asus chargers on this laptop, unless you're using a USB Type-C charger charger. I'm going to show you how to save time and money when shopping for laptops, tech accessories, and even major appliances. Go to your app store right now and download the Best Buy app. If you haven't already, are you trying to waste your money? When you open the Best Buy app for the first time, it will walk you through a few initial questions. Turn on notifications for Best Buy drops. Best Buy drops is where you'll find brand new product releases, limited runs, launches, and serious savings. At the recording of this video, you can get $400 off the 15-inch MacBook Air, $800 off the MacBook Pro 13, $430 off the Lenovo Legion Slim 5, and Best Buy is always coming out with new deals, and the app is the best way to find them. Speaking of finding deals, it's so frustrating trying to sift through all of the noise to find the right deals. Using the Best Buy app, you can personalize your alerts and feed to see only the specific types of tech you are looking for. I'll get my feed set up for laptops and desktop computers, and then I'll narrow down the findings from there to specific brands I want to find the best deals on. If you're a Best Buy member, if you're not, I highly recommend it. You'll capture exclusive member-only prices. And if you're shopping in-store, don't forget to have a Blue Shirt Best Buy team member scan your app to connect your in-store purchases to your app to make sure you capture all of the member benefits. Save tons of time shopping with Best Buy's Buy Now button and enjoy a super fast checkout experience. Place an order conveniently in the app and then go for in-store pickup or curbside pickup to get your devices faster. Now the closest Best Buy to me is about 40 minutes away. So personally, I love their super fast shipping on thousands of items so I can stay focused and hammer out more videos rather than getting jammed up in traffic. Go to your app store and download the Best Buy app now for the best deals anytime, anywhere. Now the weight and thickness of this laptop is definitely something to write home about. It is thinner, it is lighter than years past. You can see the weight and thickness coming up on the screen. Also, when you go ahead and you weigh the laptop and add the charger on top of it, it still is a nice light package just at around four pounds. So this is very on the go friendly. We technically have three models available in North America for the Republic of Gamer Zephyrus G14. We have two lighter colored models and one darker colored model. Now keep in mind that all models will be available in the Ryzen 9 8945HS. However, the dark model is only available in the RTX 4070, where the light model comes in both RTX 4070 and RTX 4060. Now for the RTX 4060, you're only going to max out at 16 gigs of RAM whereas the 4070 is going to be 32 gigs of RAM. And remember, this is not upgradable. Now, all laptops come with one terabyte of SSD. And keep in mind, they all have 73 watt-hour battery. The RTX 4070, 4060, both come with a 180 watt charger block. And remember that that's the new square charger adapter. You can no longer use older charger adapters on the newer 2024 laptops. And they all have the 14 inch OLED display that reaches DCI-P3 of 100%. Now looking at the pricing of the models, the RTX 4070 comes in at a cool $2,000 where the RTX 4060 is at $1,600. Now you can also get the laptop on Amazon for $1,899, the RTX 4060 version. So keep in mind the best deal currently is going to be at bestbuy.com.
For the first time, the G14 has gone from a magnesium alloy chassis to a CNC aluminum chassis. Now, this is nothing earth shattering. There's other companies that have done this. But what I'm noticing here is that the Zephyrus is never sitting still. Asus is constantly trying to improve it. And this is just a continual improvement of one of the best 14 inch laptops on the market. Really, really, really good execution with the CNC aluminum chassis on the G14. Now, while we're on the inside of the laptop, one of the biggest improvements this year on the laptop would definitely be the audio experience. It is noticeably different. They've gone ahead and they've embedded subwoofers into the bottom of the chassis here, and then your main speakers are facing upwards. So you have a really nice inclusive audio experience and really nice deep tones. So whether you're listening to some really good beats or watching a movie, it creates a very nice immersive audio experience. Here's a sample for you so you can hear what it sounds like for yourself. Now, while we're talking about samples, this does have a webcam along the top bezel. Here's a sample so you can check that out as well. This is the webcam on the Asus Republic of Gamer Zephyrus G14 from 2024, and a little sample of the audio for you as well. Now, we've kind of got away from ourselves here. Let's go ahead and close the laptop down, and let's check out the assembly on the bottom cover. As you can see here, we have the bottom cover fitting nicely into the side panels. We have a vent along the back, and the center, as well as coming out of the back here. And we no longer have a vent pushing out up towards the screen. They've gone ahead and they've ditched that vent to keep this OLED panel nice and cool. So that was a big improvement. Now, while we're on the outside looking at the bottom cover, let's go ahead and pull off the bottom cover and check out the upgrade path. As we pull off the bottom cover, we reveal the 73 watt hour battery. And you do have an upgradable SSD. So you do not have an extra slot, but you do have one slot that is upgradable, which is great. So there is flexibility on this laptop. Now this laptop does come with 32 gigs of RAM. So there's been a lot of conversation around, is it bad that there's no upgrade path? In my opinion, personally, this is not a bad thing. And in fact, it's kind of a really good thing because when you have RAM that is soldered to the motherboard, it's going to be faster, a little bit more responsive. And therefore you're having 32 gigs of RAM that acts as a slightly faster setup rather than having modular that you can swap in and swap out. Um, maybe upgrading to 64 could give you a performance boost, but honestly, 32 gigs of RAM for the audience I'm talking to of creators is fantastic. So that is soldered to the motherboard. And then you have your Wi-Fi card, which is upgradable as well. Three fans on this system. Now let's go ahead and open and close the lid with one hand. You can see it no longer lifts up like it used to. It doesn't have the ergo lift anymore. It opens up to about 130, 140 degree angle here. So it doesn't open flat any longer as well. However, I will say that they've created a much more sturdy chassis because it connects at four separate points. One, two, three, four points of connection. So it's really well secured to the keyboard deck. Let's go ahead and check out the uh, Flex. Really nice, sturdy aluminum top cover. And then for the screen bounce, it definitely has a little bounce to it. So if you were on maybe an airplane or a bus or you're in a car, it might give you a little bit of bounce as you're trying to work. So just keep that in mind. That's something that some people do. Let's see here as I shake my desk a little bit. You can see there is a bit of a bounce there. Now that we're opened up here, let's go ahead and check out the keyboard deck. One of the things that I noticed right off the bat is that I did not like the RGB. It honestly kind of hurt my eyes. It was a little too bright and sharp for me. So I've gone ahead and resorted to the white background on the keys. I really prefer it. I feel it's more mellow. It's easier on the eyes. Uh, it's just my preference. However, one thing I did notice is that the lighting behind the keys is a little inconsistent. You can see here from the page up and page down, as well as the edge of the N key here, control, and on the word tab, on the upper part of the tab key, it just does not have consistent clear backlighting throughout all of the keys. I even noticed that some of the lighting changes a little bit. This is set to just a simple clear, like white light, but up here we have some more blue tones. We're down here along the Z, we have more of these kind of orangish sepia tungsten tones. Um, so it just kind of changes, it's not super consistent. That's something I would have loved to have seen just a little bit more refined. A medium key press, quiet, really nice snapback, very well done. 
full size shift keys on both the right and the left, arrow keys, really nice space bar, and we have our full click button to power it on. Now, this still is not a fingerprint reader, keep that in mind. And of course, we have quick access to our volume up and down, as well as our armored crate center and muting your microphone simply with the click of a button. Now, what I love most about this laptop is they've taken all of the space possible to produce a large trackpad. So for me as a creator, it snugs up all the way to the edge, all the way to the top. It gives me plenty of space, which I really, really appreciate. And the click is fantastic. It's quiet, yet really satisfying. You can feel it. You know that you've activated it. It's a really good click. Now it is on a hinge. So it starts about two thirds down the trackpad here, and it does not click between the keyboard and the trackpad here on this press. I recently reviewed the HP Omen, and when you clicked and when you pushed hard between the keyboard and the trackpad, you could actually activate the click, which I thought was a pretty, pretty substantial design flaw. So as far as the design quality, the G14 definitely takes the crown for me. But if you want to know my full head-to-head -head review between the G14, the HP Omen, maybe the Legion Slim 5 14-inch, I'll have full dedicated head-to-head -head reviews. So definitely keep an eye on the channel. You might want to subscribe so you don't miss out on those if you're considering between different models. Now, as far as the chassis flex and press on the laptop, it is not an issue here. This is a very, very sturdy keyboard deck. And I mean that like I'm not being dramatic. If you look at my video of the HP Omen, you'll see that it's quite flexy. They did a great job with this sturdy CNC aluminum chassis. Now I'm gonna give you a quick little noise test of the keyboard and trackpad in use so you can hear what that sounds like. The ASUS Republic of Gamers Zephyrus G14 has a 3K Nebula HDR display at 120 hertz, can reach a screen brightness of 479 nits, 100% sRGB, 97% Adobe RGB, 100% DCI-P3, all at a Delta E of 1.25. To adjust the slash lighting, go into the Armory Crate, click on your device, select Republic of Gamers Everest G14 and grab slash lighting. From here, you can change the theme, which quickly changes how the lighting goes across the slash. And then you can even customize this with your own slash themes. You can make it flow or interval. You can even have it go to the music. So you can do something like Sonic Match or Bitstream. And you can make the slash react in a way that matches music or movies. There's a lot of complex ways you can program it. For me, I normally keep things simple and use the pre-programmed settings. Without further ado, let's jump into the performance section of the G14. Now, one thing that I really appreciated, Jared's Tech pointed out that between the 2023 and the 2024 model, we have basically a renamed CPU. It's not a new CPU, it's a renaming SKU with slight tweaks in the way the power is distributed. So going from 2023 to 2024, your biggest advantage is going to be the fact that you have the newly redesigned chassis on the G14. It's not going to be this crazy bump in performance, which you'll see here coming up in the benchmarks in just a moment. Now you will see a little bit of improvement as far as Photoshop is concerned when you're looking at 2023 to 2024 with the exact same specs because the soldered RAM is going to be a little bit quicker. Okay, that's gonna be probably the biggest reason that we're seeing a little bit of performance bumps in the 2024 is that soldered RAM allows for more performance because it's not having to travel as far. All right, let's go ahead and check out the performance. First, starting off with the simulated benchmarks, you can see in Geekbench single core and multi-core, Cinebench R23 single core and multi-core, and then Cinebench 2024. The one that really stuck out to me the most is Cinebench R23 single core. And you can see that actually last year's model has a bit better single core performance, just the way the cookies crumbled. But I'm just showing that to you because again, they're the same CPU with a new naming skew. Okay. So that's going to be one of the things that really stands out to me. Now, switching over to the creator benchmark, you can see that the newer model, 
the G14 with the RTX 4070 and 8945HS does outperform um, even the Asus G14 with the Ryzen 9 7940HS and RTX 4090. And to me, like I mentioned, that really has more to do with the soldered RAM giving performance a bit of a lift because um, uh, photo giving performance, giving Photoshop a bit of a lift because Photoshop really, really uh, digs RAM. Now looking at Autodesk 3DS Max, Autodesk Maya and PTC Creo, you can see that we kind of tack back and forth a little bit on the 2023 versus the 2024. Um, and I'm going to dive way deeper into this for my 2023 versus 2024 video. But again, I'm just kind of giving you some, some little previews and sneak peek ideas. Um, they kind of jump back and forth. All right, now looking at SolidWorks, you can see that it definitely is an advantage to go with a 2024 model by a couple of points over the 2023. However, my biggest recommendation, if you want to pick 2023 versus 2024, would be to look at the GPU that you're considering and the price point that you're looking at. Earlier, I talked about the buyer's guide and um, choosing you know, which spec is right for you. And if you want to have better 3D modeling performance, you wanna get the bigger GPU. That's just gonna be a no brainer. So the 4080, 4090, those are gonna give you the biggest lift in apps like Autodesk 3DS Max, Maya, PTC Creo, or SolidWorks, for instance. You can see that 4090 is really giving you some solid performance. All right, now moving on to video editing, let's go ahead and check out the playback. You can see zero drop frames for 4K full quality, 43 drop frames for B-RAW, which is it's completely unnoticeable, and then 1,136 for 6K uh, red footage. Now, looking at the 4K export time, you can see that we did see an improvement for this year's model. Um, that soldered RAM and that little tweak in the CPU made a difference for Premiere Pro video editing 4K export. That's a nine minute clip put into Premiere Pro and exported out at full quality 4K settings. And you can see two minutes and 19 seconds. That's a new best for the G14. Now moving down the line and taking a look at the 6K video editing export, you can see that it did have good performance, 15 minutes and 19 seconds. Um, gonna be great for the price point, right? This is gonna be around the $2,000 price point. Um, versus something like the RTX 4090 version, which is around the $3,000 price point. Um, so keep in mind, great export time for the G14 this year, really liking it. Now, as I look at the various export times, you can see we had a 57 second export for 1080p, so it'd make a great 1080p laptop, 4K 219, 4K on battery only. This was really nice, two minutes and 55 seconds. So whether you unplug from the charger uh, and you're kind of on the go and you need to export something, it's not going to be a dramatic difference between being plugged into the charger or not. Um, so that was really good news. Now let's go ahead and take a look at efficiency. And because we have the same processor with a few tweaks in the power consumption of the processor, we're seeing a slight differences in battery life um, from 2023 to 2024, a tiny bit better. Um, so really doesn't make a big difference. Still one of the best battery lives on a gaming laptop, 14 inch compact gaming laptop on the market, but it did not vastly improve over last year at this point. Don't forget the head-to-head -head reviews, click or tap the screen here, or the 2023 versus 2024 review. But if you're convinced and you're ready to make a purchase, links are in the description below. I'm always grateful when y'all use those links. That's what keeps this channel alive and the helpful content coming your way. I'll see you here in the next video.